Welcome everyone to episode two of The Cipher, where we will be demonstrating how you, the viewer, have been missing important messages hidden within your favorite media. In today's video, we will be analyzing the synchronicity phenomena, with a specific emphasis on its connection to the 5-9 conspiracy. In doing so, we hope to show you how important context is to the delivery of messages hidden within plain sight. Before we begin, we must first answer the question, what is a synchronicity? According to psychologist Carl Jung, synchronicities are circumstances that appear meaningfully related yet lack a causal connection. For example, if I were having a conversation with a woman who was recalling a dream about a great green beetle, and one such beetle suddenly appeared upon our windowsill, either one of us may infer that this was a message from the universe. We may assume that the dream brought the brain beetle to us, or we may assume that the beetle itself caused the dream in the first place. In either case, we would certainly be mistaken. This is because synchronicities are based in the logical fallacy, correlation does not imply causation. This fallacy refers to an inability to legitimately deduce cause and effect relationships between two events or variables based solely upon an observed association or correlation between them. As such, I will not be claiming a causal relationship between events related to the 5-9 synchronicities in this video. I will simply identify some noteworthy correlations and present possible explanations. I will allow you, the viewer, to draw your own conclusions from there. To begin, I think it's best if we start in the same place that I began to notice the synchronicities. On November 4th, 2019, a brand new subreddit emerged. Quickly drawing the attention of thousands, its creator, September 5 Survivor, began to make the claim that an entry-level employee of the organization suddenly disappeared after he failed to erase memories that would have prevented a catastrophic event from occurring on September 5th, 2020, decreasing the luck of everyone on the planet. He claimed that the subreddit was created to share discoveries, survival strategies, and wedding plans with others. While the entire thing was clearly a meme, it was popularized when Ryan of the Nexpo YouTube channel brought it to his audience's attention. The meme interested me because the subreddit was created just five days after I, an entry-level employee of a place I was calling The Corporation, had quit my job. I did so after I was put into a situation where I felt as if I were nearly framed for deleting an extremely sensitive database, full of what some may call bad memories. I called it Compromat. Still further, November 4th was an important day where I was told that the FBI were trying to set me up with a girlfriend, and Goodnight Moon planted the idea that this is all a misinformation story. The supposed wedding plans were a synchronicity that connected to my underlying motivation for all of this. But I digress. The 5-9 subreddit by itself is meaningless without more context. While not explicitly created for me, the 5-9 conspiracy surrounds me. I was pulled into something far greater than I. The 5-9 synchronicities have been 10 or more years in the making. I initially became suspicious in mid-2019 when I noticed an old domain of mine, which expired in 2014, had been re-registered by someone else. In its place was a simple landing page with some cryptic messaging, perhaps directed at me. Since then, the site has not changed much at all. It sits in a strange sort of limbo, as if waiting for the proper person to begin writing. More importantly, my original site was directly inspired by Mark 59. My name is Legion, for we are many. And it was here that I first wrote about pen and ink. Even then, I was thinking in terms of the entire world. I was trying to change the world. Pen and ink are legion. They are everyone. And the 5-9 conspiracy was created to reach everyone. So, if I am ink, who is Pen? Well, I suppose I'll allow her to answer that question for herself. On May 9th, 2020, 
I was influenced into watching this video for the very first time. And because you're doing that photo op with Cassandra 5'9", I'm thinking heels at least 3 inch. That way you two will fit nicely in the same frame. You won't be getting lost in the image. Mm-hmm. Quick look at your hair, okay, babe? Mm hmm. It's gotta get closer. Okay. Just a little ink examination, okay? As you can see, she clearly mentions 5 9. But you probably missed the ending. Let me take a quick look at your hair, okay, babe? Mm hmm. Now, you may not hear the word ink like I do. This is exactly what I mean when I talk about the importance of context. What sounds like examination from mono speakers sounds very different in binaural audio. If you didn't hear ink examination, I would encourage you to listen to this section once more with a pair of stereo headphones on. Good Night Moon very clearly says ink examination. Now, in any other context, the word ink would mean nothing to me. But it's the fact that this was placed here, literally blended into another word that makes it stand out. This wasn't just the word ink. It was a subtle hint to the fact that ink is a special word, appearing just after she mentions the date 5-9, almost predicting that I could be influenced into watching the video on May 9th, which turned out to be true. But the clues in this video didn't stop there. That reminds me, don't freak out, but Tom did call and text a whole bunch last night. Now, I won't delve into the importance of the name Tom at this point. Suffice it to say, I had one confidant telling me that they had met with a CIA agent named Tom in a dream, while another, Justice Aldean, claims to be married to a man named Tom on another planet named Alpha. She knows this also because of her dreams. I discussed the importance of her Tom in episode one of The Cipher. And Ryan, aka Nexpo, already discussed the Happy Valley Dream Survey in the very same video I linked earlier. Now, before moving on, I'll simply mention that both GB and Marno ASMR released videos with an identical theme on May 9th, over-explaining simple tasks. Given the collusion already demonstrated in episode zero, and given the fact that GB's video directly influenced me to watch Goodnight Moons on 5.9, one could make a compelling argument that the three are mind-controlling me, in some sense. While I wouldn't watch Marno's 5.9 video until many months later, it too connected with the notion 5.9 was about me. But let's skip ahead. What actually happened? on the 5th of September, 2020. Well, nothing happened. Unless you were me. In here, we could have our traditional purse peruse. Party purse peruse. Yeah, that's our thing, isn't it? <laughs> um, so the one I've got on is buxom. Isn't it pretty? It's got plenty of golden shimmers. Kind of goes with my eyeshadow, right? I have been known to coordinate. Um, the color is called Ryan, which is a little bit underwhelming to me, honestly. You know, with a color like this, I would expect something like Beach Bellini or Fairy Princess. Uh, but yeah, it's Ryan. <laughs> no. My name is Ryan. 
in Goodnight Moon's very first video since 5-9 came and went, she says my name. She would go on to mention my name two more times over the next year, as if to confirm my theory, verification happens in threes. Now, she's clearly not connecting the name Ryan to anything meaningful here. She's simply reading the color of her lip gloss. But it begs the question, was this synchronicity pure serendipity, or did somebody influence her to do this, as I was influenced on May 9th? Perhaps, as I've discussed before, by a sponsor? This isn't the only thing that happened to me on 5-9. At this point, I had already borne witness to impossible revisions of history on YouTube, but 5-9 showed me two additional manipulations, both perpetuated by Google. The first happened on 5-9 exactly. About a month earlier, I noticed an authorized device connected to my Steam account. It wasn't mine. Clearly, my account had been compromised. The device was named Ruby, though it was spelled strangely, so I googled it. Within seconds, my website was hit with its first and only visitor from China. Within hours, I had written about this on Inc. University. Now, 5-9, I was closely monitoring Google Analytics once more. I watched in real time as I received a second visitor from China. This wouldn't be all that meaningful, except for this fact. Many months later, looking at the very same data, both hits had changed. Google Analytics no longer validates what I explicitly memorialized in my writing. History had been revised once more. But this is what is so difficult about context. It doesn't matter what I tell you. At best, your reaction will be something like, huh, that's mildly interesting. And at worst, this doesn't mean anything at all. Until you have context, you just won't understand the evidence. But if you don't understand the evidence, you won't dedicate time to understanding the context. It's a catch-22. Regardless, I must try to explain. The things I've seen are insane. Maybe this will compel you. On August 28th, 2020, just days before 5-9, I came upon a strange letter on Reddit. Apparently, this was sent to a random person by an anonymous stranger. Within is a message containing the handwriting of at least five people. I regret to inform you of the death of your biological mother from COVID-19 virus. Secondly, I am not a rapist, period. Nor have I had sex with your biological mother, period. Furthermore, I believe I know how she got impregnated by herself, as strange as it might seem. I believe you deserve to know the truth. This is my last letter since Eschenwig 2 was unresponsive. I hope this letter finds you. MK Ultra, yours truly, Anonymous. I'm not going to speak to the contents of this letter because I don't understand them at all. However, I will skip to September 5th when Sam Vaknin published this statement in a video. And it's in their pocket. And so they have access to Wikipedia and that renders them an encyclopedia. So I have three examples for you. The first example, I've received, I don't know how many letters and emails and comments and so on correcting me, informing me that I'm wrong, that the right word in German is Erscheinung. And in the video, I said Erscheinung. Just to remind you, Kant made a distinction between how things appear and how they really are, the thing in itself. And he said the appearance and the thing in itself are not necessarily commensurate. That's a um, topic for another conversation, although it underlies the issue of trust. So, if you didn't catch that, Mr. Vaknin references a German word, Erscheinwig, here. This is almost identical to the word Eschenwig, which I had seen just days prior in that strange letter. Curiosity piqued by the synchronicity, I went to Google. What I found was bizarre. 
If you search for the word Eschenwig without the R, you'll find a bunch of locations. Apparently, this is the name of a place. However, if you search for Ersheinwig with an R, as Sam pronounced it, you will find the very first image result is that letter. This is so incredibly coincidental as to be highly suspicious to me. While the word Eschenwig appears throughout this post, the word Ersheinwig does not. I see no good reason why this image would return in Google's search results for Ersheinwig, while the thousands for Eschenwig do not. Why is this single solitary image the only one that shows up in those searches? I think this was perhaps a demonstration of what I've been talking about. In both the letter and Sam's video posted on 5.9, it was a demonstration of MK Ultra. It was mind control. I was led down a path that would allow me to make this connection. And what did I learn? Well, just like with the Chinese analytics data, this was another example of Google manipulating their technology. While the first was a revision of history, this was more like a manual override of search results. It's as if somebody somewhere configured the algorithm to return this exact result, knowing precisely that I would be the only one paying close enough attention to notice. But how could someone be so narcissistic as to believe they are special enough to warrant such strange research from a company like Google. Well, to be honest, I am a narcissist, just like Sam Vaknin, just like Donald Trump, just like the other 1% of society. However, I fall on the milder end of the spectrum, and I was chosen because they needed someone who was not already a lost cause. They needed someone who could provide insight into just what it takes to reach people like this, to reach people who care for nobody but themselves. I assure you, I didn't come to this sense of self-importance lightly. It took months and years to get here. That said, at some point, a person must accept the evidence given. All right, fine. You still don't accept my evidence. Perhaps this will help. On January 1st, 2018, my favorite band, Toehider, would announce a new Patreon project called 49 Songs You Must Hear Before You Die. They would spend about three years producing this catalog. By the time it was complete, Toehider had actually produced 59 songs. They released the album that came of it on exactly September 5th, 2020. But that isn't all. Mike Mills, the band's lead singer, has often been compared to Freddie Mercury of Queen because of his vocal range. Overconfident, outspoken, and courageous. Still I go on and on and on and on. Freddie Mercury's birthday was on September 5th. Mike also sang on a 2008 Aryan album titled 01011001, which is binary for the letter Y. Translated to hexadecimal, this is the number 59. And all of this ties cleanly to Justice's story at Fate Agency. A later Aryan album called The Source is about a planet called Alpha, which was destroyed by sentient machines, much like she describes. Humans were able to escape the planet just before destruction, starting over on a planet Y, or Earth, as you may know it. Little did they know that Mike's character, TH1, was infected by the virus, and he brought that virus to planet Y. I am just now making this connection as I write 
the script is Mike the Queen, it would make so much sense. If you'd like to listen to the 59 songs you must hear before you die playlist, you may find it over at the source. Use the command slash radio 59.21. Still not convinced? Let me tell you some more about the Five Nine Hackers. On November 19th, 2020, I was notified by YouTube that Toehider had published an unboxing video of the new album, I Like It. I finished my writing, which took a couple of hours before retiring to bed where I opened up this video. It already had a thumbs up. On the video titled, I Like It, it already had a like. Before I had even opened it. There are only three possible explanations for this. One, I'm confused. Somehow, I opened the video, gave it a like, and forgot all about it. Or two, someone, perhaps a hacker on my computer, or one who stole my YouTube username and password, did this on my behalf. Or three, YouTube, or somebody connected to them, such as the FBI, did this. But, as if that weren't enough, Goodnight Moon also published a video on November 19th. Here, you go, you go, Slavia. No, I'm not, I'm not really getting those vibes. What about, what about Morocco? Maybe, Duke, Shock, Are you underwater at all? Now, my name is Ryan Brooks, so the inclusion of Brooks Range obviously caught my attention here. It's also worth noting that the fictional town Goodnight Moon is so famous for is called Babelbrook, which also includes my last name. Perhaps more interesting is the nose tap, followed by the country of Morocco. On November 26th, 2019, the exact same day as the three videos from episode zero, the girl next door, my FBI contact, brought up Morocco in a video that was the very first overt clue that somebody, somewhere, was watching my activity. What is it that you would like me to review? Your project? You see, I am the best reviewer, so I am sure that your archaeological trip to Morocco is going to require me to go with you. you know, let me just start with page number one. You see, it is so profound, so detailed. It kind of descends into your madness. While the mention of Morocco is mildly interesting, a descent into madness, followed by a conspicuous look at the camera, was a major tell early on when I really didn't have much evidence to work with. Just four days before this video, on November 22nd, I published a journal entry on Inc. University titled, A Slow Descent into Madness. In it, I published a redacted copy of my employment letter at Event of Technologies. However, I had missed a redaction. I had leaked my employer, and Angelica, my FBI confidant, made me aware of this on exactly the same day that so much other verification would come. All right, let's skip ahead a little bit. It's April 9th, 2021, just one month before May 9th, or 5-9. This day is known as International ASMR Day and a few of my confidants released some mildly interesting content. I will skip all of it except for Scottish Undertones video. In it, he describes himself as in a sort of hostage situation. Uh, I make uh, videos on YouTube under the name, uh, it used to be uh, ASMR Muzz, but now I, I changed my channel to a uh, name to um, Scottish undertones ASMR, but now I've, I've just changed it to Scottish undertones. 
um, a few months ago, I uh, I made some uh, videos uh, on a thing called uh, Project Muzz, which was just a, a silly little uh, sort of a joke. Um, I'm just here to sort of categorically state that um, um, just to categorically state that um, Project Muzz is uh, it doesn't exist. It's just a silly little thing that I'm, I made up. Project Muzz does exist, and I'm going to prove it to you. If I go to YouTube right now and I post the name Muzz in the comments section of any video on the platform, it will be automatically deleted a few seconds later. This has been ongoing for nearly a year. And it isn't just me. This works for anyone, any device. Why isn't anyone paying attention to this? In a previous video he posted about Project Muzz, Scottish Undertones makes the claim that all major tech giants are involved in this. Given the things I've seen over the past couple of years, I am inclined to believe that. I have seen strange manipulations of my technology from every single one of these companies. Before moving on, I'll simply note, if 5.9 is a synchronicity, could 4.9 be one as well? Perhaps connecting to the very same Toehider project? 49 songs you must hear before you die? Okay. I went a little off track there. Let's bring this back to 5-9. Clearly, something is tying Toehider to Goodnight Moon to anonymous hackers studying me. Now, we're going to skip ahead to May 6th, 2021, just three days before 5-9. Goodnight Moon was trying on glasses when one specific pair was packed full of clues for me. Ooh, I like these. Okay, so, uh, Ivy, my name is Ivy in these ones, um, and Ivy does calligraphy, bullet journaling, bullet journaling and calligraphy, um, a coffee connoisseur. knows how to pick locks, but don't tell anyone about that. Ivy has got a pet cat, a pet cat named Charlie. He's quite old. Please, Stardew Valley. There's a lot here, and I'm only going to explain a few things. You can read about the rest at the source below. The first is the name Ivy. In the seven days leading up to 5-9, I was completely rewriting my short story, The Carrot Predator. In it, I made a hint to the idea that Goodnight Moon's character, Penny, was a poisoner, by way of a special kind of ink. Much like Poison Ivy from Batman. Second, I had just purchased a lockpicking set two weeks prior, which I intend to give her fake boyfriend, Chris Marno, if ever we should meet. In my story, he is known as The Thief. Finally, Elliot is the name of the protagonist in a television show which inspired so much of my work, Mr. Robot. Elliot is a schizophrenic, drug-addicted hacker with multiple personality disorder, much like I would seem to a lot of people. A major plot point revolves around the hacking of Evil Corp, destroying the global economy and redistributing wealth to everyone in the world. This was called the 5-9 hack. But as if that weren't enough, Elliot is played by a man named Rami Malek, who 
you may remember as the guy who played Freddie Mercury in the Queen movie. See how this works? All of these things are connected. At least, they seem to be. Alright, so we've arrived at May 9th, 2021. What happened today? Well, as the day was uneventfully drawing to a close, I decided to try and make something happen. Taking inspiration from a Toehider song, Meet the Sloth, I turned to Google for some song lyrics, which I would ask my confidant, the ghost, to take into Toehider's Discord server. I searched for the Tub Ring song, making no sound at all. What returned was Toehider's The Sun Can't Hold a Candle to the Moon. My search string itself was completely different from the one I had explicitly typed, as were all of the search results. So I just rolled with it. I took a section of lyrics from that song and I sent them to Ghost, along with a screenshot of a Discord link to their server, which just so happened to have exactly 59 users online at midnight on the eve of 5-9. These things are just so bizarre. As before, this can only be explained in three ways. One, it was my mistake. Two, the hacker manipulated my computer, swapping my search string for something else. Or three, it was Google themselves. And in this instance, I'm more inclined to believe it was a hacker. I have known for quite a long time that there is somebody sitting on my computer watching my every move. While I was alerted to this fact literally two days after beginning my job at Eventive Technologies, I only received true verification this year in 2021. Three of those verifications came from a single person. One may argue that verification happens in threes. A Discord user, whom I simply call the Archangel, has been sitting quietly in the Fold server for nearly a year now. While he never says a thing to me, or to anyone else publicly, it is well known that he is a moderator for Discord's largest white hat hacking server called Laptop Hacking Coffee. With nearly 10,000 members, that server is incredibly popular. In one instance, I made a passing comment to the link, connecting Laptop Hacking Coffee with CERN and the Large Hadron Collider. Just days later, on April Fool's Day, that joke became reality, as Laptop Hacking Coffee completely rebranded their server for a day. In another instance, several key confidants, including the Archangel, were deleted from the source's database. This would only be possible if somebody had stolen credentials from me or exploited a zero-day vulnerability in Gun. Either way, this was telling, especially when I found the Archangel's username connected to two different Discord IDs. But perhaps the most compelling signal was the very first one the Archangel showed me. For the longest time, he has used the following status message. This is a terminal command. While I had always ignored it, writing it off as a meme, on March 1st, 2021, I realized that it actually was a valid command, and I felt compelled to test it. So I did. Within minutes, I saw his status change. For the very first time, it was a Bitcoin address. See the ending? Now be hurt, 595D. The 59 connection is obvious. While 5D may relate to the wildly popular theory that spiritual gurus are espousing right now, called the fifth dimension, or 5D, it relates to aliens. Either way, this felt like a response to my command. I took his Bitcoin address and I put it on the source's website. A minute later, as if in response, he reverted his status back and I've never seen it change again. So at this point, we are three for three relating to strange events happening to me on 5.9 since the creation of the 5 September 2020 subreddit. On May 9th, 2020, I was mind controlled into watching a video where Goodnight Moon would say my pen name, say the name Tom, and also mention the date 5.9. On September 5th, 2020, Goodnight Moon would again say my name. I would also discover the manipulation of data relating to Google Analytics and Google search results. 
and on May 9th, 2021, I would witness the manipulation of my Google search string at exactly midnight and directly relating to Toe Eider. I promised that I'd never do this again, but I am going to make a prediction. On September 5th, 2021, Season 5, Episode 9 of Rick and Morty will be released. But this probably isn't the important thing to happen here. I think that 5-9 might bring something related to a statement made by Dan Harmon, one of Rick and Morty's creators in a podcast published on November 14th, 2019. I was truly blackout so drunk. Fun. I, I think, and I think part of maybe like I don't know. I don't want to be like a drama queen, but I just I also want to be like honest and like try to figure out what the fuck is wrong with me. What am I going through? What? Why am I in this weird state? You know, we 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 had our producer friend Mike who who passed away, and then like um, his uh, wife was there at the premiere, and I think I think maybe that like set me off i don't know that just seems like a something that a fucking horrible drunk uses as an excuse like i like i like like she was robbed of her husband and i i just have this shame like i'm just filled with shame about it because i feel like we take people from their private lives and we use them in tv and then it's like it was for nothing and as justin said to me recently it was like do you think that if Mike knew that it was going to end that way, that he would have shown up for a day of this shit? The answer is obviously no, not at all. Of course not. Like what the fuck? But I, I don't even know. And then to see her there it was like, what the fuck are we doing? I, I, I don't, and it super sucks that he's gone. Yeah, I'm sorry, but it, I don't. I don't mean to like fucking draw it out and all that stuff. But that, but I want to get to the bottom of it. That's the profane thing to me is the idea of like, it's this old Hollywood thing of like, yeah, what we do is so important that it's worth human life. And it's not like, I mean, that's well, nothing's worth that. It, 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 but but also, if you have like, to be stuck on this motherfucker, you might as well make a show like that. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, he chose the job, right? I, he probably could have quit. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's that's why this is so complicated. No, yeah, but like, no, it's actually yeah. You know, we 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 didn't tell you. No, that's there was this controversial program. We yeah, we actually selected him for birth. Nick, how are you? Like, well, what's it like, like growing up in New why Jersey? You don't say that, and then I. <laughs> uh, I love going. You know, it would be easy to write off this statement as some kind of deadpan joke delivered in poor taste. But when you consider that we live in a world where Britney Spears' entire fortune is under the control of her father, and that she is being forced medication, made to dance at the will of her sponsors, it really makes you wonder, could Hollywood choose a person to be something from birth? Could they make it impossible to escape such a program? I know that Goodnight Moon has been an actress on YouTube since at least 11 years old. I know that she's been approached by creepy men, even so far as to having one of them break into her home and poison her sister's pet. Is it so far of a stretch to think that she may have been integrated into some kind of bizarre program, sponsored by law enforcement and big tech, with the sole purpose of changing a world full of sick men like me? I think it's entirely possible Goodnight Moon was raised to become a producer. THE producer. In a brand new form of media which casts the viewer as a protagonist in a massive, collaborative, and interactive story. Written by Inc. She just doesn't realize it yet. At this point, I only know this much. Something important has happened to me on every 5-9 since I was made aware of this program. I can only hope that somebody soon will recognize they are killing a good man. I can't escape this on my own. And neither can she.